Okay, let's talk about velocity. We just saw what displacement looks like. Let's talk about velocity, and specifically, let's talk about average velocity. So average velocity, it's still a vector, but for simplicity, we just write it with a bar on top without that arrow. And average velocity is simply this, delta r over delta t. Okay, delta r is a vector, delta t is of course a scalar, v is therefore a vector. Now that's your average velocity. Okay, and we've done a bunch of problems calculating average velocity, but let's review. Let's say you drive from San Diego to LA, and then you drive back to San Diego. What's your average velocity for that whole trip? I'm going to ask you this question. What's your average velocity for the whole trip? Yeah. Okay. All right. I think maybe we should go back to this definition for average velocity and see what this definition says. This definition would be the following, right? Rf minus Ri divided by delta t. What is your Rf in this case? Your final position, which is? No. If we went from San Diego to LA and back to San Diego, what's our final position? It's San Diego. What's our initial position? San Diego. So what is your average velocity for the whole trip? Zero. Which seems a little weird, right? How could your average velocity be zero for the whole trip? It's because it's a vector. And so what's important is the displacement for your whole trip. Rf minus Ri. If you end at the same point you started from, your average velocity is always zero. And it kind of makes sense, right? I drive 60 miles per hour north up to LA, but then I drive minus 60 miles per hour coming the other way. And so it all averages out to zero. All right. Now, different question, of course, is what's your average speed for the whole trip? And based on the example that I just gave you, that would be 60 miles per hour. That's a little different. But velocity is a vector, and so you have to worry about the endpoints compared to the starting points for that. Okay? All right, what about instantaneous velocity? Well, that one we can write like this. Also a vector, it's just not an average, so we don't put the bar on it. And instantaneous velocity is when you're driving along and you look at your speedometer in your car, that is your instantaneous velocity. And so it is the limit of delta r over delta t as delta t goes to zero. Namely, I'm going to take this measurement over a very short time. Okay? And anybody in calculus here? Anybody taking calculus? Yeah, so what is this quantity that we're talking about right here? Okay, but it has a very special name in calculus, which is what? Give you a hint. It's not the integral, it's the derivative. Yeah, this is the derivative. Okay, as you take the limit of this function as delta t goes to zero, this just becomes a derivative. Okay, the r dt. All right, maybe we should try an example of that. Okay, let's say that we have the following. Let's give it r is equal to one half a t squared, and we are moving in one dimension, i hat. Okay, what is v? Well, we just have to take a derivative. So v is going to be dr dt 
which is d dt, the derivative of 1 half a t squared i hat. What is the derivative of 1 half a t squared? Somebody raise your hand. Yeah. A t, right? I pull down the exponent, that 2 cancels with the half. I go a t to the 2 minus 1, which is just a t, and so I just get that. We done? Is that right, or do I have to add something else there? Yeah. Add the direction, which is I hat. Yeah, exactly. We got to hang on to that i hat. Okay. The velocity is a t i hat. If you have a vector sign on the left side of the equation, you have to have a vector sign somewhere on the right side of the equation. Okay, good. Now let's talk about two-dimensional motion, and let's take a look at how we can do an example like this in two dimensions. 